Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. It's pretty late in the year now and I can't do any more gardening outdoor. It's very, very cold. We're in mid-November now and it's very, very chilly outside. So today I'm going to start growing some of these things indoor. The things I'm going to grow today would be giant Caesar, some sweet basil, purple basil, these are butter crunch lettuce and some salad bowl lettuce. The hydroponic method I'm going to use is very simple. I'm going to use items that I basically find around the house. I mean, I don't like to spend a lot on these projects. So I'll list them out for you. And if you can acquire this material, then the method for growing this is going to be very cheap. You need a container. This container is a to-go container when you buy food out of a restaurant. Or if you buy salad, they'll give you one of those. So keep those. Some of them come with a lid. So this is the lid that I'll be using. You need seeds, of course, net cups, and you're going to need a bunch of these um, hydrotin, or they call it lava rocks. These you can buy at a hydroponic store. They come in pounds or however they sell them, but these are what they look like. You need some water and containers, any type of container you would like to use. I've used these before and they work great. These are for only one plant. You can also use this larger one that, that you can buy at a grocery store. This costs you about $3. And I have videos on how to make these, so I would, I would link you. Or you can also use what I would be using, which is that container there. This is just a 3-gallon container that you can get at Walmart or anything like that. And uh, I have videos on how to make this. If you want to use the same setup, you can also click on the video on how to make one of those. But that's where my vegetables are going to stay. And here's my light setup. So I'm using EnviroGrow 4x6, which is a 4 feet by 6 tube T5. That's where all my peppers are grown as well. Today we're going to start some seeds. Starting seed is very simple. You're going to take your rock wool. You can buy these also at a hydroponic store. They come in sheets of 30 or 100, whatever they have. Get the best price and go with that. We're going to dip it into water real quick. There's nothing special about this water here. It's just tap water. So let it soak. We're going to let that soak really well. In the meantime, let's take our seeds. I'll start with the one that I already have open. These are my Caesar. And make sure you have this label so you don't get confused. And I have a diagram for this. so. So let's take this out. So I put three at the top and three at the bottom. Sometimes the holes are not very large, so use a spoon or something to dig a hole so make it larger. You want to start multiple seeds so that one of the seeds will grow and uh, you don't waste your effort. And then here's our seed. This one here is the giant Caesar. See the seeds are very small. So you can just dip the spoon in water and grab a few. Just put them in there. Just put a few seeds, that way something will grow. And depending on how old these seeds are, some of it may take longer. If you have fresh new seeds, usually they'll start like within two or three days, but the older seeds will take much longer. All right, so I put a bunch of seeds in there, probably like four or five, just to make sure that I have something to sprout. Let me pause the video and I'm gonna do for it for the rest of this, and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. All right, we're back, and I have completed filling these little rock wool with some seeds. I put about five each. It's a little bit excessive, but I wanted to make sure that something would sprout. I went ahead and closed up the holes, and then once you're done, you'll just need to Put the lid on top and put it somewhere where there's plenty of lights. And what I will be doing is that's what it's going to be until it starts to sprout. It should take about three to five days. Some may take more, but I'll come back and show you when everything starts to come out. All right, here it is. Seven days later and all of the seeds have sprouted. The basil here is somewhere in there. This is the ba purple basil. And I made my list here, <laughs> just really messy. Giant Caesar, salad bowl, butter crunch, 
Pak Choi. I broke one because I dropped these. That's fine. I have a bunch left. Sweet Basil and the Purple Basil. So it's seven days now. They are not yet ready because I'm waiting for it to grow some roots at the bottom much more. See, there's some already. But I'm going to start to prune this out, saving the rest, and then allow the, the, the remaining one to put out more roots at the bottom. And then when that happens, I'll transfer that into the hydroponic system. And that should take about two weeks. Okay, today is exactly two weeks and my plants are ready to be transplanted. Check out the growth on these guys. So if you look at the bottom, the roots are ready. So when you see roots like this, they're basically ready to be transplanted into your system. Let me show you what I'm doing. This container here holds two and a half gallon of water. And I have already placed the water in here and I pH balanced the water to 5.9. So anywhere from 5.9 to 6.5 would work perfectly. Then all I have to do is add the nutrients. I'm using Master Blend 41838. For a 5 gallon, I use 12 gram of 41838, 12 gram of calcium nitrate, and 6 gram of Epsom salt. For the half of that, I use 663. And so if you have a, a gram scale, just go ahead and measure 663. Then put it into a cup then you can pour water into here. I recommend pouring warm water because if you pour warm water into here you can stir it and it will dissolve very very quickly. So I have my nutrients ready and all I have to do is just pour that into there. You can stir that up. I will in a little bit to speed things up. I'm not going to. The next thing you would have to do is just transplant your plant into each of these cups. What you can do is prune out what you don't want and just leave what you want. The nicest looking plant in here. I like them all like this. I'll prune them out later after the video, but for now I'm just going to show you how to do it. I have a list of what I'm growing. It's a messy list, but I know what I wrote. <laughs> Chicken scratch. So anyway, I have um, Giant Caesar, a salad bowl lettuce right there, and then I have Butter Crunch, Pak Choi, and two of these are basils. Let's just go ahead and transplant that into there. You will also need some rock wool so that it can keep the plant in place. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and transplant one of it real quick and I'll start with the giant Caesar. I will place it here into this cup like that. If you look into the uh, system, you can see that my water just barely touched the bottom of my net cup and that's exactly what you want. When you put that plant inside, it'll make contact with the water. And then the only thing you have to do is drop some of these lava rock here into your cups to help it stand up and be sturdy. All right, so that's basically all you have to do when you transplant. Let me go ahead and finish this up and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, we're done transplanting the plants into my system. And here is where it's going to stay for the remainder of the life cycle. As you can see, I prune them out. There's only one left of each except for the basil. The basil is okay. You can leave a few. They will be just fine. I will come back in two weeks and I will update you guys and show you the progress. Alright, today is exactly two weeks after transplanting. So the total time for the entire process has been four weeks exactly. I haven't done much to this. It's just been sitting here growing and it's looking very nice. You can see that these are a little bit slim and leggy. That's because a few days ago I went out of town and I had to shut off half of my lights. Lettuce needs a lot of lights. If you don't provide enough, they will become tall and slender and very skinny. But I have increased my light now and everything is back to normal. The pak choy is blocking out the lights from that plant back there that is the reason why it's growing the least as opposed to everything else everything is looking fine I'll turn this a little bit so that they, that one can get some light then let me show you the root system the water level is still the, pretty much the same the plants is just still too young to soak up all of these water very fast so in the next two weeks it's gonna send much more roots down and the water level is gonna drop but that's all for now and I'll come back in two weeks and show you what these look like. 
All right, today is three days after the last update and I apologize, but I have to end this series early. I'm running out of space in my grow tent and I need all the room I can get to start my 2016 pepper season. But before I get rid of these, I just thought I'd show you guys what they look like and how easy it is to grow these indoor. The main thing you need is the right pH, whatever nutrients you like to use, mix it accordingly and you can just grow it just like this. There's no pump or anything like that. The container is very simple to make. And let me show you the root system. The water level is still good, so it will sustain these plants for a few more weeks. But since I will be getting rid of this, I don't have to worry about that. But um, as you can see, the plants are healthy. It's growing really well. One thing you want to note is that pak choy are very competitive plants. It grows very fast and it sends out roots also very quickly so it will outcompete the neighbor. Initially it blocked this guy from receiving any light so I had to sort of like move it around. That's the reason why that guy is so small. But anyway the plants are doing great if um, you have room and space and time these will grow full and become very very nice plants. But um, I'm going to end this video here. I hope you guys like the video and enjoy the process. It's, as you can see, it's very simple. I hope you try it out for yourself. Wow, this basil smells amazing. Anyway, sweet basil, highly recommended. That's pretty much all there is to this video. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to post it below and thank you for watching.